gonna keep it in for the tip of the flame. Oh, oh my, my god. gosh. <laughs> that that, is I, I like blinked and it was red. Keep it's it like not a zircon long. anymore. I like don't believe what I just watched. Okay. Is it heavy? Um, it's medium. A gem of many colors, and when it gets fired up, you see even more. Are we playing with fire today? Oh, okay, that's like an oil A lamp. burner. A burner. An oil burner. Some tongs. I do see a lot of colors here. It's pretty fiery. Yeah, okay, I know what this is. The brownish yellowish colors kind of give it away. This is thermochromic zircon. Oh. So I think we're gonna do a little experiment today. We are gonna play with fire. We are gonna change the color of what? these zircons. Oh, We're gonna play seriously? with fire. So there are some gemstones that are called thermochromic. It's actually a reversible color change. When a stone is subjected to heat, mm -hmm. the heat affects its electrons in such a way that light interacts within the crystal differently, which affects the color. That is so cool. Yeah, so we're gonna change the color yeah, temporarily. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get at it. We're gonna get a lighter. This is a piece of hydrogrossular garnet. This is going to serve as kind of our, 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 our resting pad. place. Okay, yeah. These are gonna be gotcha. very hot, so we're not gonna touch them. Okay. Um, so let's start with the Tanzanian one first. Sure, Does that sound it's good? a little bit lighter in body color than the Nigerian one. All right, so you're gonna wanna keep it in the tip of the flame for about 30 to 60 seconds, and we're gonna see some color change. I Here, keep it on. Do. Yeah. It was like a brownish yellow. Now it, it is this really nice, vibrant yellow. That's crazy. So heat, which is a form of energy, affects electrons. The electrons are moving around, and light is interacting differently as a result. Like, we're there. Yeah. I think. It's starting to match the flame. <laughs> and I have to say that the Spurgeon, the display of spectral colors, becomes a lot more noticeable in this like yellowish golden color. Mm. That is so cool. I think we're probably at about medium well right now. Okay, so let's put it right there. Now we've got the Nigerian one. You said this is gonna be even more dramatic. Mm -hmm. Remember we'll, that starting color. We'll <laughs> keep it in change. there for like 60 seconds. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That that, uh, I like blinked and it was red. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh my God, it's like garnet colored now. Oh, that is Holy so cow. cool. I can't believe that. Okay, so it's like a, a really bright orangish red. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my okay, God. Keep it it's in like there not a, a zircon more. anymore, you know? It's something totally different. But that, what was that, 10, 12 seconds? Yeah. Now it's golden brown and delicious, look. <laughs> okay, I think wow. you're good. Okay, let's just, we'll blow it out. I know. Oh my goodness. Okay, how cool was that? I like don't believe what I just watched. So it's reversible though. As, It'll just fade. Yeah, so what happens is the electrons kind of like cool down and they go back into their normal energy states, which again affects how light works within the stone and how we see it. That was nuts. So these can take anywhere from a couple minutes to up to an hour to change back. We've got a few more boxes that we want to open up, and so we'll check back at the end of the episode and see if they've changed back by then. Let's give props to the world's oldest mineral. Okay. Well, that's okay. It's zircon. Oh, cool. I like those crystals. These are like textbook zircon crystals. Zircon is a zirconium silicate, part of the tetragonal crystal system. So you have basically a rectangular prism with a pyramidal mm -hmm. termination at the top. You can see that really well in these crystals. I can't believe the reflectiveness of these guys. So zircon has a really high refractive index, high dispersion value. The luster can actually be sub-adamantine. So adamantine is kind of reserved for diamonds. Sub-adamantine is the level below that. So a really high luster. It was confused with diamond for a long time because of that high dispersiveness, the extremely high luster, like with the termination points and the nice hard lines on the crystal structures. This is a great example of that. So diamond is in the cubic crystal system. Diamond often forms in octahedrons, which are essentially like two pyramids stacked on top of each other. And the most common color of diamond is a yellowish or a brownish color that does look quite similar to this. One of my favorite things about zircon is just how staggeringly old they are. 
So the Earth is only about 4.56 billion years old. The oldest zircon that we found is 4.4 billion years old. Super old gemstone can be found all over the world. It's one of the most common minerals on Earth, but the problem is the grains are often not more than a few millimeters in size. The big crystals are rare. That's what people want. That's what collectors are, are looking out for. Another fun fact, zircon is super dense. It has a high specific gravity in like the four and five. Another interesting thing about zircon is that it can often contain trace amounts of uranium, which actually means that it like irradiates itself over time. What happens with these zircons, which are called metamict zircons, the uranium slowly decays their crystal structure. It changes some of the inherent properties of the gems. It changes its refractive index. It changes its transparency, its density. They go from being highly organized crystals into basically amorphous mm -hmm. stones, like glass. Some people have tested their stones with Geiger counters to see uh, how how much radiation is in the stone. Okay, we have another box. So let's move these guys to the side. Citizen of the world. Oh, Whoa, we got a ton. So I'm just looking at some of the labels here. We have zircon from all around the globe. So these two like rose pink ones are from Madagascar. This pair of pears is cut by Avon Pham, who's a famous lapidary. Just amazingly well cut, beautifully colored rose zircon. Love the cut on that one. Yeah, right? It's a rich, like, earthy yeah. pink. Yeah. Iron can cause like a brownish or a blackish color in zircon. Other colors can be caused by color centers, which are essentially atomic defects in the crystal structure that affect how light interacts with them. You really can get so many different colors. There's colorless zircon, there's blue, there's yellow, there's red. This one is a really vibrant orangish red. This one is actually from Pakistan. The host material has that nice metallic luster. Mm -hmm. I'd say this host material is a mica schist. And then you have the nice luster of the zircon. That's a really That's nice an awesome piece. piece. Red zircon can be one of the most valuable types of zircon. It's very popular. Mm -hmm. It's got that red of garnet that's so appealing, but also the dispersion and fieriness that comes close to diamond. A lot of the red zircon that you see on the market is actually a result of low temperature heat treatment, but that one is au naturel. In the past, red zircons have actually been referred to as Jason, and you'll see that in biblical texts. Yeah, my, my mom brought me a zircon from Spain, and they still, they call it, it's labeled Jacinta on the little vial that it was in. So when you see that, that's in reference to red zircon. Yeah, Jason. This one to me is like, it's kind of like terrifying. It's kind of got like an evil look, don't <laughs> okay, you think? Okay, yeah, no, like, it's negative energy yeah, emanating it, from um, this specimen. So this one is from Norway. I just feel like the Matrix is very like dark and mountainous. It's like Lord of the Rings-esque. Sure. Don't you think? It's like the edge of a volcano or something. Yeah. It's biotite mica. Okay, so another yeah. type of mica. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this stone. So this is from Mogok, which is in Myanmar. It's a famous locality for gemstones. You've got jade, mm -hmm. ruby, amongst other things. It is so clear. Yes, the clarity is phenomenal. Zircon is a really fun stone to test. One of my favorite tests is the spectroscope. That's a great tool. Zircon is really interesting in that it can have up to 40 absorption bands. It's the uranium that causes all of that absorption. There's one line, it's at 653 nanometers, which is almost the end of the visible light spectrum. Spectroscope readings are all based on the color of a stone, but even colorless zircon will have that diagnostic line. When you're testing and you see that band. The relief. It, the relief, <laughs> the because relief. You like, you're like, okay, I'm that's zircon. It. That's from Tanzania, that, again, that has the really nice brownish orangish color. It's over 22 carats. That's a big stone. It's like a modified pear shape. That's a custom cut. This is an amazing stone. You can actually purchase this stone and the pink zircon from Madagascar. We'll put the links below in the description. 
Okay, so let's look at the, the one piece of jewelry on here. Yeah. So this is blue zircon. Yeah, okay. That's a really great vibrant blue. It's actually nearing kind of towards appetite, which is like that neon electric blue, but don't you think? Yeah. And this was probably treated, almost all blue zircon that you see is gonna be heat treated. Cool story, I think, about blue zircon. A whole bunch of it hit the market in the 20s, the 1920s, and George Coons, who is a, a well-known mineralogist, he suspected correctly that they were treated. After some testing, it was revealed that they were all heat treated, and uh, the market just didn't care. They liked the color too much to really mind if they were heat treated or not. Another interesting thing about the color, so blue zircon can be really strongly dichroic, meaning it displays two different colors depending on the viewing direction. If you tilt the stone a little bit, you can see it's like yeah, a really colorless yeah. yellowish green under the table. Yeah, it sort of turns into aquamarine mm -hmm. from another angle. Okay, Rob, we've looked at a lot of zircon today. Oh. It's time to take a closer look. Okay. So let's pick our favorites. I'm gonna do this guy. I'm gonna do the red zircon. It's that really deep, rich red color. And I love the contrast between it and the mica schist host material. All right, I'm gonna do this crystal from Tanzania. I love when specimens can just tell us exactly what they are. And this gives a great clue to its identity and its form, its luster. And so why don't you take a closer look? You want to check out the uh, zircons we cut? I sure do. Okay. So what do you think? I feel like the yellow one has sustained longer than the reddish brown one. I think the reddish brown one changed more. True. But they've kept their color longer than I thought they would. Yes, agree. Very cool. I love taking these deep dives into gemstones. Absolutely, yeah. I learn something new every single time we do this. If you want to take a deep dive into some gemstones, head over to gemstones.com. It's a great resource. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.